Ciao a tutti, oggi un video molto particolare, ci troviamo alla libreria Verso Libri di Milano e qui con me c'è Pravda Yun, autore di Peste e Lacrime, edito ADT Editore, ve ne ho parlato tantissimo sul, cala sul canale, ve l'ho straconsigliato, è secondo me una delle raccolte di racconti più belle che abbia letto e io con i racconti sono un po' diciamo, c'è un rapporto di amore e odio con i racconti solitamente, ma questa raccolta la consiglio anche chi con il genere ci litiga molto spesso. Let's talk about your book, yes. which is your first uh, publi publishing in Italy. Uh, it's one of your first one. Yes. And the original title is Sad Part Was. Sad Part uh, Well, then that's the English version. The English version. The original in Thai was uh, Probability. Italian is Party in Tears. Yes. And it's also the first uh, short story of your collection. It's one of my favorite ones. Thank you. Because I really love the, the idea behind it. During your um, talk, you said it was inspired by a true story. Well, not a true story, but it was inspired by an event in my life when I was studying in, in high school in the States. I happened to be, uh, I have a roommate. Mm -hmm. I had a roommate at the time who was Italian. Uh, his name is Sebastian Romauri. Uh, we were very close at the time. And I had some Thai instant noodles okay. uh, with me, <laughs> which was very spicy. Um, and he enjoyed eating it. And I just asked him, like, why, why do you like eating this so spicy? And he said, oh, I just enjoy, I enjoy the tears that come out after eating it uh, just, just because it's spicy, not because I'm sad. And that was that was always that always stuck to me, and I just used it as an inspiration to the story. But it, it, it has nothing to do with him or with the, with the, with my memory in particular. And I love this idea behind crying without being sad, <laughs> yes. because I feel it's also a significant uh, sensation from your own book. Yeah. Reading it was like a beautiful experience because it traveled through a little melancholy mm. and then this playful uh, mm. uh, behind the sadness it's almost uh, it almost reminded me of uh, magical realism yeah in some ways not exactly markets no mm, because your writing is much Very more urban, uh, urban yeah, yeah modern uh, while uh, markets is really visionary in some ways yeah, yeah. but the writing is urban, is almost simple in a good way, of course, mm -hmm. but it has this cinematic power in it that pretty that I enjoyed very much. And uh, talking about that, you also work in cinema. Uh, in fact, I knew you uh, as uh, the screenwriter of some of my favorite Thai movies because uh, my followers know I love uh, author cinema, uh, essay cinema, and I, and I sometimes advise them some titles. And uh, I, al I also received a comment about Thai cinema. There's, there was a girl who asked me, oh, that's nice to talk about those movies, but I don't know uh, which one is the most uh, intriguing, the to most watch. Uh, to watch. Uh, so can you advise? The oh, um, there are many different new ones now. Um, Thai cinema is roughly divided into the mainstream cinema, yeah. uh, very, very commercial, sometimes quite good. And then there is also independent Thai cinema, which I think Pene belongs to. Yeah. Um, and many of us belong to the, into the independent uh, camp. Um, and they, they are different in taste. So I think it depends on what kind of uh, taste you want to try. Mm -hmm. um, the independent, independent cinema is more, um, maybe more difficult to digest sometimes because it's slow, it can be slow, it, uh, it can be experimental. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you're interested in Thailand as a country, as a culture, Maybe the independent Thai cinema is more authentic in that sense because you get the depiction of Thai life style and Thai, uh, how, how Thai people actually live, how they behave, how they interact with each other. Because in the, in the mainstream commercial cinema, 
basically is kind of like Thai version of Hollywood. Yeah. So it's, uh, you can find that in Hollywood films anyway. Um, so I would say maybe try to look for a more like independent Thai film for the taste of Thailand. For example, I already said to him that one of my favorite Thai movies is Last Life in the Universe, yes. which has this amazing moments where it gets into surreal. Yes. And uh, inside a story, a very atmospheric, eerie story, lots of silence, and then there are these moments where the movie gets surreal. It's like the re realism and surrealism in some ways embrace. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest powers I've found also in your book, in your style. And uh, you said your, you described your style as urban in some ways. And inside your stories, Bangkok is pretty relevant. Mm -hmm. But you said during your talk that now it doesn't interest you as much. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I found out uh, through your books and also in the last pages of Post Faction uh, that uh, the interesting part of Bangkok is that it became um, really urban in a very short time. Short yes. time. Yes. And uh, do you think the city uh, interested you also for these changes, for these uh, different inspirations, for this ambiguity? And why does now doesn't interest you anymore? Um, the reason that it doesn't interest me much anymore is because it's just becoming very similar to a lot of cities in the world, okay. you know. So if you go to Tokyo, if you go to Seoul, um, or even some parts of big places like New York, you find similar things, you know, you find similar stores, you find similar food. Uh, so in that sense, it almost doesn't really matter where you are. Uh, and and that, that part of the city doesn't interest me. But of course there are still corners and streets where uh, you can find more authentic uh, culture um, and uh, people who are doing exciting things, creative things. Um, we, yeah, I mean, Bangkok still has that. Uh, but maybe it's also because of my, my age. I mean, I, I grew up there. Uh, I went back there again when I was 26 and I've lived there since. Mm -hmm. uh, so being there for 20 years now, mm, you, you tend to become familiar with a lot of things and, and you tend to not get so excited about, about much uh, that's happening there. So I mean, it's personal, I think. I, I'm sure many people find Bangkok very exciting still. Um, and there are still many areas to explore that I don't even know. So uh, sometimes I, I get surprised as well when I find a new place or a new corner in Bangkok that, it, that I've never seen before. I wish to go there yeah, one day. Yeah, you should day. come, yes, yes. Yeah, Everybody should come. But turning back to your career as an artist, and you're also painter, uh, writer, movie maker, screenwriter, I wanted to ask, uh, these different inspirations, these different sides of creativity, uh, do they combine into one another? Uh, in some ways, uh, being a painter influences your writing. Uh, how does it work? Um, all these activities influence me as a person. I don't really know if it comes across to my readers or my audience, but but I need to do these things as as an artist. I think because I get different sort of different kinds of satisfaction from each art. Um, writing gives me a different kind of satisfaction, um, but also doing visual art is inspiring in a sense that I get to be more uh, liberated from, from ideas or from language. I mean, I work with language a lot, but sometimes I feel like you need to escape from it in order to feel fresh about it. So visual art helps a lot in that sense. Um, when I paint or when I design something, I hardly ever think about concepts or, or uh, human ideas and things like that. It's, it's almost usually very abstract. Um, and I enjoy playing with texture and composition, colors, um, things like that. So it's different, but 
is also crucial in the way that I express myself. Writing screenplay is really challenging for me because it's quite, um, it's almost like writing an instruction manual for the crew. Mm -hmm. So I have to be, I have to make sure that what I'm writing is easy to understand. I'm trying to communicate to a lot of different people. Uh, for example, the art director has to know the, you know, what the room I'm writing looks like. Yeah. Um, the costume designer has to know what the actors are going to wear. So I can't be too abstract, I can't be too personal. It's, it's, it's a very technical sort of writing. Mm -hmm. um, but writing short stories or fiction in general is very open, it's very free. Uh, I can basically go into that world and do whatever I want uh, with it. So um, I enjoy it more, I guess, uh, to write fiction. And I get the kind of rewarding sensation when I, I finish a piece of writing. Uh, so it's challenging and it's rewarding and it's satisfactory. But but when I have when I have to make a film, I have to write a screenplay too. So you know, <laughs> it's a different kind of job. Yeah. Basically. I won't ask you what do you uh, prefer between the two <laughs> no, because no. I know. It. I wanted to ask you something about collecting stories yes uh, so uh, how do you collect your stories um, usually is there is a concept okay um, for example my, my second book that just came out in the UK um, the stories in that book are all about body parts okay. so when I wrote them there I had a concept of writing stories that revolved around uh, body parts um, but this collection was more was loose, you know, in, in the way that I had just been writing for a few years, and there was no big concept behind them. You know, I just wrote as I wanted to write, um, and and they were collected in the that time period. So it was like time based uh, mm -hmm. decision. But these days it's, it's different. My new book of short stories that will come out in Thailand next month is based on one imaginary town that I made up. So this is another kind of concept um, for that collection. So it, it, it depends on the time. That okay. I and uh, last question. Mm -hmm. Where do you think uh, you are now as an, as an author? And where will you go? Where you imagine to As go. an author, I'm considered a mid-career okay. <laughs> mid <-career laughs> writer because I'm not that young anymore, and I've written quite a number of books. So I have to, I don't, you know, like when 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 people get to my age, they always say, oh, there is midlife crisis or something. <laughs> but, but I don't know if I would consider it a crisis. But it, but it definitely is a point in my life where I have to make a kind of decision as to where I, I want to go after this. Um, I've written already enough collections, I've written five novels, um, I've written a lot of essays. So in terms of writing, I've done quite a lot already. Uh, so I have to decide whether I want to just continue what I've been doing or do I want to find some kind of improvement in some way maybe in the in content or in form or I have to find excitement uh, somehow to make me excited about keep to uh, to keep on working or just to maybe write less mm -hmm. and uh, less work but more substantial for okay. example I could now spend three years on one novel or something but before that, that was unimaginable because three years would be too long to work on something without a job, you know? Okay, uh, yeah. So, so now it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like maybe more project-based. Mm -hmm. I have to think in that term. Maybe next year I will do another film, so I have to have enough time to work on the film, things like that. So it's, it's more about, it's become like management. Okay. <laughs> I have to manage my life better. That's interesting. Than before, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, thank you very much no, for you. appearing on my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Feste Lacrime, uh, Pravda Yun. Io ve lo consiglio, ve ne ho parlato molto appunto, collezione, una raccolta di racconti brevi. I really hope uh, in Italy will be more of your books. Yes. Uh, let's keep it real. <laughs> e, fateci, fatemi sapere se l'avete letto, non l'avete letto, se lo leggereste. Io vi aspetto un prossimo video. Uh, grazie mille a Pravda Yun per essere so qui. Yes. Uh, io vi mando un bacione e vi aspetto alla prossima. Ciao ciao. Bye.